Yeah, I mean, it, it's painful to lose when you think that you should have won, uh, but you didn't. And and that was really the October 15 game in Salt Lake City. This was not that. Utah was the better team start to finish. Uh, I mean, you know, not in the, like the first uh, 10 minutes of the game, but really the last three quarters, you know, Utah was by far the better team. And, you know, the, the injuries were part of that, but really – this comes down to it. Larry Pogram. Hey, congratulations, Larry, uh, listening in here at the voice of college football. And one thing you definitely got right about this game was that, you know, Eric Gentry, it's not a good matchup for him, certainly in the running game. Uh, I would say that where Gentry needed to be a factor was in the passing game, you know, and USC allowing third and tens, you know, happened so much against Cal happened against uh, Arizona. Third, third and 19 to, into a third. touchdown. Yep. So like, so Gentry in the running game, like Larry got that exactly right. But, you know, Gentry was such an important factor in the passing game with his long arms, getting deflections, getting into passing lanes. And we didn't see him make an impact there. And he didn't seem to be all the way back, you know, to the level that he needed to be to the level that he was, you know, in the Oregon State game when he really saved uh, Caleb Williams bacon. So that, that was a factor, but, you know, Utah was just so comprehensively better that you're not walking away from this game saying, you know what, we should have won. No, you just you just can't say it. And, uh, you know, you, people will say that, you know, it was a lot like the first game. And, yeah, the, kind of the contours of the game, especially in the first half, were a lot like the October 15 game. But, you know, and I remember uh, Rick saying that USC needed to run the ball in that in that first game when, when leading 21 to seven. And I think he was on point for saying that in this game, like the running game never really uh, took flight. And that's where Andrew Voorhees absence really, really mattered for this team. Uh, and, you know, I've seen people occasionally, not, not just tonight. Though, I mean, it was tonight in part, but at various points over the past month saying USC doesn't have a good offensive line. No, USC does have a good starting offensive line, a very good starting offensive line. But one of the things we said all offseason at the Voice of College Football uh, with Mark Rogers, and we said it into the the, the, the the beginning of the season, we said it in the middle of the season, and we're saying it here, is that if you take away the starters and you have to get down, uh, down the depth chart, a, a, a team like Utah – which is tough as nails is going to expose that. And you see, here's the thing against Arizona, against Cal, against Colorado. All right. That's not your, your, your thin offensive line. The lack of elite depth as you go down the depth chart is not going to matter all that much, but against Utah coming off the UCLA and Notre Dame games. Yeah, it did matter. So, you know, th there was not a lot of talk during the week about Voorhees status. I mean, he didn't, you know, he left the Notre Dame game in the second half, but that was pretty quiet. Like on the USC reporters that I follow, not a lot of talk about his status during the week. And so you get to this game tonight in Las Vegas and he's not playing like that. That made me think, uh Oh, like, like th this could be a real problem. And even though Utah was missing Fillinger and Ellis and, some of its other pieces, but again, yeah, this comes into this comes back to what Larry Pilgrim said. Utah, you know, was missing a lot of key guys: Fillinger and Ellis on defense, also Queefy on offense, Tavion Thomas not there, and yeah, Utah has cultivated quality depth under uh, Kyle Whittingham. That that was a key separator, and it really goes back to a, a larger, broader theme, and why this loss, you know, is certainly painful. But it's not, you know, it's not devastating. Every loss is painful, especially on a stage this big. And when the college football playoff is one win away and you don't get it, that's painful. I mean, it really sucks. I mean, I'm going to take a huge, <laughs> I'm going to take a huge page view hit. <laughs> like a lot fewer people are going to be reading Trojans Wire. So like my, <clears throat> my bottom line is going to suffer. So like, it's not as though I don't feel this, but you know, being able to just evaluate this as a football analyst, this is not the, the supremely devastating loss. Like this, the, the supremely devastating losses are when you think you should have won. And you did. And, and part two is like when it's all set up for you, when everything is in place and you expect, you fully expect 
to be there among the elite. And this is where we go back to the start of the season, where for me, the, the, the separator was this team can compete for the Pac-12 title. This team can compete for a New Year's Six Bowl. It can compete for 10, maybe even 11 wins. But the playoff was probably asking too much. Now, of course, USC had a great chance going into this game against Utah, and Utah was banged up, as our Utah fan friends were saying. So, like, it was right there for USC. It was within reach. But did, did we think before the season that, that this was a playoff caliber roster? No, no, we did not. And that lack of depth, depth that Utah has cultivated over time with Kyle Weddingham, that was the separator. That made the difference. And so it's really hard to be devastated. I mean, we're all we're all hurt. You know, people who root for and care about USC, of course we're hurt. Of course we're sad. Of course this sucks. But it's not devastating. You know, it's not devastating the way uh, you know, certain certain kinds of losses are like 2006 UCLA, like that. That was devastating. You know, th- there are certain gut punches that like you never ever forget. This, you know, this is year one. This is building something. This is oh, and this is overachievement in year one. I I said it uh, on the the Mark Rogers show on on Monday. Nothing that happens from here on out is going to change the fact that USC has overachieved. In year one, 